the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Look at this. They must have killed a whole tree to print this bill. 3,000 text messages in a month? 3,000? What could you possibly have to say in 3,000 text messages? I'm surprised you haven't worn the buttons off your phone. 3,000 in a month? Now that's a record. No, I'm not being smart, Mom. I just can't believe I sent 3,000 text messages in 30 days. Don't look at me like that. Hey, when you think about it, that's only an average of 100 a day. Considering how many friends I have, that's only like 10 messages a piece. That's nothing. I know this girl who sent over 5,000 messages in a month. Her bill was over 25 like, pages long. No, it doesn't matter that we have unlimited text messaging. It's the principle of it, Sarah. The fact that you're wasting all your time with your fingers glued to that phone and doing nothing else. You haven't even begun your summer reading project and school starts in a week. A week. Maybe you can write your paper to your teacher in text messaging. I don't know why you're getting so upset. We've got unlimited text messaging. I could send 10,000 messages if I wanted to. No, Mom, of course I'm not saying I'm going to send 10,000 text messages. Yes, I know the phone's a privilege and that you can take it away. Yes, I understand you made it through middle school, high school, and college without ever sending a text to someone. That's because they barely even had cell phones back then. No, I will not calm down. You know having a phone is a privilege that we give you and can take it away at any time. Having a cell phone is not a necessity. I certainly made it through all my school days and some of college without ever having one. Oh, come on. I was kidding. Why can't you ever take a joke? What? No, you can't take my cell phone. I haven't done anything wrong. How will my friends get a hold of me? How will I know what's going on? What if something important happens? Jason is supposed to ask Andrea out this weekend. I'll be the absolute last person on earth to know. You think that's funny. You think I'm too old to have had a chance to have a cell phone. Well, they've been around a lot longer than that. I chose not to waste my money. But what would you care about money? You don't pay the bills, do you? Well, maybe that's the problem. Maybe if you started babysitting and paid for this outrageous free text messaging, as you call it, you'd think differently. That free to you cost me an extra $29.99 a month. You can't do this to me. What if I promised to text for a whole week? Well, uh, I could never make it a whole week. What about a whole day, Mom? All the way until tomorrow. Come on, that's fair. This is prime time texting. Parents heading off to bed. No, uh, uh, no, of course it's a matter if you're heading off to bed. No, I'm not texting anything bad. No, you can't read the messages in my sent box. That'd be like reading my diary. Come on, Mom, be reasonable. I promise I'll cut back. Just don't take my phone. That's it. Give it here. Anyone who has time to text message 3,000 times a month has time to do some extra chores or make some money babysitting or cutting lawns. That's right. You're not too good to do some honest labor. You can have this back when you can't afford it. That was the scariest most terrifying, mind-blowing thing I've ever lived through. I can't believe I'm still in one piece. My body is shaking all over it. I think I want to vomit. I now know what they mean when they talk about your life flashing before your eyes. It was all happening in slow-mo and zoom speed all at the same time. And I know I felt the truck tires graze the side of my arm. That was the most exciting, exhilarating, mind-blowing thing I've ever done. Talk about the ride of your life. That was it. The speed. The cold hair hitting your face. That near collision with the truck. Oh my gosh. It was like straight out of a movie. We could probably become stuntmen because of that. We could have been killed. So we were like gummed to that guy's tires. My heart is pounding so fast, I still might die from a heart attack. Then to top things off, in the middle of all that, I would lost my new video camera. Pretty sure I checked it when I went to shield my face from the impending impact of the truck. How it didn't hit us was completely beyond me. You got it on tape, right? Tell me you got it on tape. I'll plaster that thing all over the internet. I'll be... We'll be famous, William, the two of us on every computer screen in America, in the world, and all caught firsthand from our point of view. The speed, the truck, right there, about to hit us, all caught on tape with your... Dude, where's your camera? Where's the camera? It's nothing short of a miracle. I don't know why I let Dennis talk me into these things. Why would I even believe that hooking a sled up to a truck and then being slung down a snow-covered hill towards a four-lane highway would ever be a good idea? 
Thank goodness the rope snapped, or we'd be highway roadkill for sure. Oh my gosh, tell me you didn't drop it. Tell me you got the most amazing stunt ever pulled in the history of homemade stunts. It will never be as perfect as that ever again. I mean, the truck practically grazed us, dude. What, do you know the timing on that? One second slower and we would have been smeared all over the highway. It would have taken dental records or DNA testing to identify us. You'd think he'd be grateful that we're alive, that, by, that somehow, by the grace of God, we survived that disaster. But no, he's ticked off because I didn't get the whole thing on tape. He doesn't even care about my camera. He just cares about the footage. This is unbelievable. There's, well, there's only one thing left to do. Find the camera. Make sure it still works and recreate the stunt. That's right. Hook the sled back up to the truck and do it again. This time, I'll hold the camera. And now? Now he wants to do it again? He has completely lost his mind. You don't cheat destiny twice, my friend. Well, he can go next time without me. Or my camera. It's like what they say in show business. Right of our lives. Take two. I just don't know what I'm going to do. I've got ghosts bothering me 24-7. They think that just because I can hear and understand them, that means that I want to talk to them. You wait and wait all your life. Okay, maybe all your death. For someone to come along who can actually see you. Then bam, there he is. Right in front of your transparent face. So of course they want to talk to the guy. I haven't had a conversation with a real human being in a zillion years. Okay, maybe just a couple of decades. Do you have any idea what it's like to see dead people first thing in the morning and last thing in the night? It doesn't make for pleasant dreams, I can tell you that. Do you know how hard it is to be stuck here and have no one to talk to? I've been going out of my mind. It's not like there's help for that kind of crazy either. You know what I'm saying? You see any dead psychiatrists, psychiatrists running a practice around here? Mm -hmm. Life was so much easier before I got this gift. Or rather, this curse. They won't leave me alone. I can't even leave my own house. They're, all, they're always there, waiting for me at the door, ready to talk, talk, talk. But what does this joker do? Acts like he can't even see me or hear me. Completely, 100% ignores me. Tries to look right through me, which, okay, isn't exactly impossible. But I saw his face. I saw him react when he came into the room and I was hanging out in there. He looked right at me. He did. Oh, he looked away real quick. But it was too late. I saw him. I saw him. Do you know how many times I've been caught talking to thin air? I swear they're going to commit me. I'm going to have to spend the rest of my life locked up in the loony bin because these stupid ghosts won't just go into the light. Why, why do they need me to help them understand it? I'm thinking it isn't rocket science. Look, leave the living alone and go be with people of your own kind. You know, the other people with maggots coming out of their head. Then bam, out come the headphones. Now he has his eyes closed and the music cranks so loud he wouldn't be able to hear me if I was rattling chains in his ears. As if I could or even would do something as lame as that. The, why, why can't they see that I just want to be left alone? I don't know how I can be any clear, clear. If I wanted to talk to a ghost, I'd kill myself. Well, he's gonna take them off sometime. When he does, have I got an earful for him. He might as well get used to it. Me and him, we're gonna be stuck like glue for a long, long time. Look, you don't talk to me, and I won't talk to you, okay? Have you ever wanted something really, really bad? Like, so bad it eats at your insides? Well, of course you have. Who hasn't? What would Christmas be like if we didn't obsess over getting things we think we just have to have, right? But have you ever really, really, really wanted something? Maybe even dreamt about getting it. And then once you get it, whoa, you're over it. Like maybe it wasn't what you wanted after all. 
Or maybe by the time you got it, you already found something else that you wanted even more. Boys are so dumb. It's amazing they can even function. They're that dumb. They walk around all cool, thinking every girl in school wants to go out with them, acting like they run the school. Act then if they actually do get a girlfriend, they're completely clueless about how to act. It's ridiculous. Well, see that girl over there? That's Brandy, my girlfriend. The girl I just had to have for three whole months. She's all I thought about 24 seven. See that mourn over there? That's Jake, my boyfriend. He bugged me for three whole months to go out with him. Left me notes in my locker, my gym, or my books, even in my gym shoes. Listen to this. I look at you, my insides turn to butter. Corny, I know. And look, I've got a ten more of them. I could probably wallpaper my bedroom with them. And if that wasn't enough, he got every single one of my friends to put in a good word for him. So finally I said yes. I mean, he's kind of growing on me. Even though he's obviously dumb when it comes to having a girlfriend, he's kind of cute. Just look at him. The, that, that wavy brown hair and those deep blue eyes. I wrote her more notes than Beethoven put in his symphony. <clears throat> Get it, like, notes in a symphony. <clears throat> Sometimes I just crack myself. Things would be perfect. Except now he won't even look at me, much less talk to me. I seriously have not been in 10 feet of the guy since I said yes. And we have three classes together. How lame is that? We spoke more, we were just friends. I think the guy is scared of me. <clears throat> yeah, well, anyway. I really, really wanted her to go out with me. Only now that she said yes, I'm kind of over it. It's like I won the race, got the prize, posed with the trophy. Boring, done, over. Thing is, how do I tell the girl I begged to go out with me that I don't want her anymore? Well, he can have all these corny love notes back. Because of this minute, this relationship is officially over. Hey, I know. Maybe I'll write her a note. how mad I am at my mom right now, how tired I am of starting fresh in a new town and a new school just so he can climb the stupid corporate ladder? Ugh, I'd rather she sat before a corporate step stool. How much power does she have to climb? How much power does she have to have? Ever since dad left us, she's been on this kick of proving herself to the world or something. I am sick of being the new girl in school eating alone, walking to class alone, being stared at and whispered about. And that's if I'm lucky. Most times, I'm completely invisible. Not even worth the time it takes to check me out, to wonder where I've come from or what I'm all about. See the girl over there? The one sitting all alone. The one sitting in complete and total peace. I would give anything to be that girl. No one bothering her, yakking in her ear about boys, teachers, clothes, and every other minute detail of their lives. I am so sick of everyone coming to me with their problems. They think that just because my father's the minister of the town's largest church, that I, by default, care about each and every one of them, that I have to like every single one of them. At one school, I went a whole month before anyone even spoke to me. Teachers included. I took up space. That's about it. Mom promised me we're staying here until I graduate high school. <laughs> yeah, right. We'll be lucky to make it a whole year here. Yeah, yeah, I know. Love thy neighbor and all that jazz. But come on. I'm not a saint. I cannot possibly be expected to care about each and every one of these trouble-laden kids. But, of course, they expect me to. I've practically been raised with these people. I see them on Wednesdays, twice on Sundays, and at my house all the time in between. It's like we've got a revolving door. Everyone, come in! Don't worry that we never have a family moment to ourselves. Can't I have a moment to myself? Just one second when I don't have to smile and nod and listen as if I truly care. 
I don't want to be the girl that everyone can talk to. I want to be that girl, the one that no one talks to. Hasn't anyone ever heard that silence is golden? I can't wait until I do graduate. Four more years and I'm free, off to college, anywhere I want to go. Mom can move all she wants. I'm picking a place and I'm staying put. That's right, same place all four years. Four years! I can't wait until I turn 18. I'm getting out of this town and moving to a big city where no one will know my name. I'll blend in with the masses and become a nobody. It'll be so great. Maybe I'll even make some friends, get to know some people, figure out more than just the main streets around the town. I'll be a hermit, a recluse. I'll be the weird apartment girl that never speaks or waves or smiles at anyone. I'll have seen everything there is to see than everything there is to do. I'll know people, people will know me. Maybe then I can live in peace. For once in my life, I won't be invisible. Thank you.